my fellow Americans. My fellow Americans. Oh my God, that's not a very good start. Why don't you swallow? Why don't you swallow? Why don't you be like the first lady? She knows how to say, okay, I can swallow in five different languages. Donald Trump hates immigrants so goddamn much. Why does he keep marrying them? My fellow Americans, tonight I am speaking to you. I'm a speaking to you. Uh, I am a Italian. No, I am pepperoni. I am speaking to you, America. I don't know, Dernard. I don't know if you're sparking right. Dernard, you're not sparking the way you're supposed to be sparking. Because there is a growing humanitarian and security crisis at our southern border. How presidential. Every day, Customs and Border Patrol agents. Here's a passage from the Bible, Leviticus 19, 33 to 34. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as a citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. It strains public resources and drives down jobs and wages. Among those hardest hit are African Americans and Hispanic Americans. So you know what's worse than talking to a communist? Talking to a capitalist. There, now I've insulted everybody. Since crappy baby Bush got us a black president who is decent, perhaps the Trump disaster will get us an MLK kind of president. Our southern border is a pipeline for vast quantities of illegal drugs, including meth, heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl. Why don't you end the war on drugs? Because USA is tied to the war on drugs, and America buys so many goddamn drugs. That's a hypocritical policy. The war on drugs has failed. USA should not be tied in with the war on drugs. Every week, 300 of our citizens are killed by heroin alone, 90% of which floods across from our southern border. More Americans will die from drugs this year than were killed in the entire Vietnam War. That's social Darwinism. You do stupid things, win stupid prizes. In the last two years, ICE officers made 266,000 arrests of aliens with criminal records, including... Here's a New York Times article. This was written in 1999. They did a report on the atrocities that happened in Guatemala with Ronald Reagan, the School of America, the CIA, and military support of the general that we sent down there to kill a bunch of Mayans. Those charged or convicted of 100,000 assaults, 30,000 sex crimes, and 4,000 violent killings. On the morning of July 17, 1982, a convoy of army trucks made its way up a nearly impassable trail to this remote Mayan Indian hamlet and unloaded a company of troops. Soon afterward, a helicopter arrived with the unit's officers. The U.S. trained soldiers rounded up the villagers with the promise of a feast. What happened next was an act of butchery that left all but four of the village's inhabitants dead and all the buildings razed. According to contemporary accounts by people who lived in neighboring communities, many of the women were ordered to disrobe and raped. Children were torn from their mother's arms and eviscerated with knives or beheaded with machetes. The rampaging troops killed all they found, shooting villagers, blowing up others with grenades, hacking some to death, burning some or crushing them under the walls of fallen buildings. We've been killing Jacqueline and Felix's family forever. R.I.P. Jacqueline and Felix. R.I.P. Over the years, thousands of Americans have been brutally killed by those who illegally entered our country, and thousands more lives will be lost if we don't act right now. This is a humanitarian crisis, a crisis of the heart, and a crisis of the soul. Last month, 20,000 migrant children were illegally brought in. I'm actually becoming more sympathetic with Dernard as this presidency comes to a devastating end, as the presidency crumbles, I'm thinking, you know, 
uh, he wasn't that bad. Donald has kept a low unemployment rate. Donald has kept the stock market on fire the entire time. The Dow Jones has risen more than 8,000 points overall. That's an increase of 50%. It was 16,000 when he came in, and it's gone up to 24,000. So that's 50% up, which is crazy. The stock market has been crazy. I wouldn't say the economy is good, but I would say that the stock market's been doing good. Two Supreme Court justices have been nominated to the bench. They are pieces of shit, but... They were nominated, so he got those people in. The criminal justice reform bill was passed, and everybody said how great that was. Even Kyle Kalinske said that the criminal justice reform bill was fantastic. Also, during this shutdown, Donald Trump has not, he's, uh, he's American fascism, but he's standing up to the FBI, he's standing up to the CIA, the Homeland Security, Border Patrol the Department of Justice, the Department of Homeland Security, Department of Agriculture, which is some bullshit, but he's standing up to the fascist. He's standing up to the military-industrial complex with the Syrian withdrawal. So Donald Trump has been pretty anti-fascist. ...into the United States, a dramatic increase. These children are used as human pawns by vicious coyotes and ruthless gangs. One in three women are sexually assaulted on the dangerous trek up through Mexico. Women and children are the biggest victims, by far, of our broken system. But him going on strike actually reminds me of that uh, Ayn Rand novel, Ayn Rand, where all the rich and the capitalists went on strike. Fine, if you don't want our leadership, then we're going on strike. That's exactly what I want because I think we, the average common man has enough intelligence to be able to run his own microeconomy, the community's economy, the county, the city. I think the average common man could do a great job if they ran the economy. Really, working class people are what keep this entire thing running. So it's crazy that he's going to strike on us when we should have a national strike on him. We should have been pressuring him the entire time with a national strike. So he's striking us, but there's been about eight shutdowns under Ronald Reagan. Everybody shut down the government one time or another. So Ronald Reagan shut it down eight times in the overall scheme of things. They already voted for the back pay, so all those employees are going to get their, you know, get their money anyways once this thing is over. So uh, overall, in the scheme of things, you know, I think he's doing more damage to himself than good. If he ends up getting the damn wall, well, let me mention something about the economy. This is the tragic reality of illegal immigration on our southern border. This is the cycle of human suffering that I am determined to end. My administration has presented Congress with a detailed proposal to secure the border and stop. So on the economy, the reason why I won't say the economy is doing well because we got a shit ton of poor people. We got a shit ton of poor working class people. Fifteen percent out of one hundred is poor. So how many people are poor in America? Fifteen percent. So just figure that out. What ten percent of three hundred and twenty nine is what? Three three thirty two million people. So about what? Forty million people, forty five million people are in poverty. And then they had that one measure where if you just doubled the poverty level, then over 50% of Americans are poor. Stop the criminal gangs, drug smugglers, and human traffickers. It's a tremendous problem. Our proposal was developed by law enforcement professionals and border agents at the Department of Homeland Security. These are the resources they have requested to properly perform their mission so 15% of Americans are poor, but then again, 85% of Americans are not poor. Here in Castillo County, in Conejos County, in Alamosa County, here in the San Luis Valley, and in Pueblo City, the poverty rate is ridiculous. In Castillo County, it's 27%. In Conejos County, it's 23%. In Alamosa County, it's 21%. In Pueblo City, it's 26.5%. The child poverty is 32% in Castillo County, 28% child poverty in Conejos County, 27% child poverty in Alamosa County. And, and keep America safe. In fact, safer than ever before. The proposal from Homeland Security includes cutting-edge technology for detecting drugs, 
weapons. In Castilla County, the elderly population is also poor. 23% poverty rate for the elderly population, 65 and over in Castillo County. In Conejos County, it's 17%, 65 and over. In Alamosa County, it's 14%, 65 and over. So the poverty rate is hitting the children and the elderly the most. So there is a lot of wealth. The stock market is kicking ass. The GDP per American, the nominal GDP is $62,500. So that means every single American, if you divide the GDP up, divided up by the uh, every single American per capita, they are making $62,500 worth of wealth to the overall national economy. The nominal or the uh, the PPP is 55000 uh, for the GDP. So in terms of the purchasing parity, power parity, if you use that rate, so if we use the nominal rate, which is just the total amount, but the purchasing power parity just says how much we can you know, use it uh, compared to the nation's currency value by a basket of goods approach. So if we buy a basket of goods for one country, how much can we buy from the basket of goods from another country? And then, so basically, how much can you buy, right? So you can go ahead and have a good GDP rate, but if you can't buy as much, so if you use the nominal rate, we're number one economy in the world. Our GDP is $21 trillion. But if you use the purchasing power parity, the PPP rate, then we're number two behind China. The Dow Jones is at 23,915. That's January 9th, 2019. The peak in the Trump presidency was about 27,000, August 2018. 16,000 is when the Dow Jones began under Trump's administration. The stock market has grown by 8,000 points, which is 50% growth. I've already mentioned that. So the stock market is doing great. The GDP per American is doing great. The, we don't have as much purchasing power as the Chinese do, but we are producing a shit ton of goods, which is really all we need to do for macroeconomics, produce a shit ton of goods and try to sell them, you know, exports, try to get them sold elsewhere. But the poverty rate, the homelessness, there's a half a million homeless people, there's 15 million children in the country that, have, that are in poverty, there's 30 million Americans that have no health insurance. These are all crises also. These are all crises. So 27% poverty, 28, 23%, 21%, that's one out of five. That's one out of four. In Castillo County, one out of four people are poor. And for children, one out of three children are poor. So, for one out of three children in Castillo County, their economy is not doing better. They are not doing any better off than they've ever had. The same numbers have always been the same under Republicans and Democrats. There is no war on poverty. Poverty has not been addressed and attacked and pinpointed, in, except for in LBJ's time. So, since LBJ, we haven't had a war on poverty. Illegal contraband and many other things. We have requested more agents, immigration judges, and bed space to process. I've seen a lot of different numbers, but 5 in 10, 4 in 10, 8 in 10 Americans work paycheck to paycheck. So that's 50%, 60%, 78%, so that's 80%. Four out of five Americans, once they lose their job and can't find another job and they don't get that paycheck, well, they're going to be poor and homeless just like the rest. Half a million homeless in this nation, so that's a bad indication of the economic uh, situation. So the stock market is kicking ass and taking names when they're making record profits. It doesn't trickle down to the homeless or to the poor. It doesn't trickle down to the people that need it the most. 34 million Americans are the poorest 10% in the entire world. So 34, Amer 34 million Americans are in the poorest. And why? It's not so much that they have a lower standard of living, but they have debt. So they, are, they have stifling, misery-inducing, deadly debt because of education and health care cost. One in seven Americans are part of the world's 10% poorest, mostly because of debt, while three in seven Americans are part of the world's richest. We have the worst inequality here in the United States than any other country in the world. You got the super duper rich, right? You got the one percent, then you got the one tenth of one percent. The typical household in the United States needs sixty thousand dollars to run a house, so both adults need to work full time, fifteen hour 
$15 an hour jobs to make ends meet. No American in the bottom 40% has more than $31,124 in total wealth, including the house, car, and savings. So the Americans in the bottom 40% only have $30,000 worth of wealth. They've been making 30 something thousand every year, but they've only been able to save 30,000 worth of wealth. Rest of it is going into the landlords and the health insurance and the car insurance pockets and the corporate elite. With dozens of families whose loved ones were stolen by illegal immigration, I've held the hands of the weep. So overall, if you see an immigrant, if you see a foreign-born person in the United States, they're speaking another language, they look different than you, they're dressed differently than you, the 75% of those foreign-born immigrants in the United States are legal. They're legal. Who you will be hearing from later tonight has repeatedly supported a physical barrier in the past, along with many. So out of the total amount, you have 44 million foreign-born people, 44 million total immigrants who live in the United States. And out of those 44 million, three out of four are legal, 76% are legal. So we got 44 million foreign-born. Well, how many is illegal? Let's break it down. 21 million of those 44 million are naturalized, and therefore they're just straight up legal citizens. They're Americans. So nearly 50% are Americans. 23 million, number one, are lawful permanent residents, number two, illegal, or three, temporary visas. So how do those numbers break down? My administration is doing everything in our power to help those impacted by the situation. Of the 23 million non-citizens, 13 million are lawful residents. Lawful residents have the right to stay here. They're working towards naturalization. They are here, you know, be legally. They're lawful residents. So 23 million non-citizens, 13 million are lawful residents. 1.7 million hold temporary visas. And that's where I hear that a lot of people stay over. They get temporary visas and then they just kind of hang out and they don't uh, update or tell anybody that they're here. But both of those are legal. So 1.7 million temporary visas, legal. 13 million lawful residents, legal. Now, how many does that leave left? These are what I call the purgatory immigrants. We have 11.1 million purgatory immigrants who are technically illegal, unauthorized, undocumented, non-American aliens. O'Reilly was against shipping them all out because he didn't want this country, the images. He just didn't like the perception of the thing. It looks like Nazi Germany when you're sitting there rounding a bunch of people up. They don't build walls because they hate the people on the outside, but because they love the people on the inside. So the total amount of illegal immigrants in this country is 11.1 million. 11.1 million immigrants are not supposed to be here. The only thing that is immoral is the politicians to do nothing and continue to allow more innocent people. 11 million immigrants out of 329 million total Americans, that's 3%. 3% are immigrants. So 3% are illegal immigrants. I would say that that's a crisis. 11 million, 3%. And because of all those crimes that are happening, there has been 2,000 killed by illegals in 2018. There has been. That's an accurate number. At the request of Democrats, it will be a steel barrier rather than a concrete wall. This barrier is absolutely critical to border. So the reason why there's 11 million illegal people here, it's not just the illegals' fault. It is their fault. They crossed the border. They weren't supposed to be here. I'm not against their humanity. I think that they're allowed to exist. I respect their humanity. I'm a liberal. I'm a bleeding heart liberal. I love everybody. But we're a nation of laws. And since we're a nation of laws, since the American people haven't demanded to the U.S. Congress to get ourselves a 2019 immigration law, or 2018, 2017. We haven't had an immigration law this millennium. We haven't had an immigration law since 1990. So 1990 is the last immigration law that we passed. So we have not addressed the elephant in the room. There's 11.1 million illegal human beings, immigrants, that are here in these United States. So what can we do? Really, either we could deport all of them, we could give them all amnesty, or we could do something in the middle. 
So I offer a middle passage for the bulk of them, offer a pathway to citizenship. Do Ronald Reagan's plan, do Baby Bush's plan, do Chuck Schumer's 2013 plan. There's many different ideas out there about how the legal immigrants that are here now can become citizens. But do the interviews, find out who is who. And I bet you with 11.1 .1 million people, illegal people, when we vet them, when we do interviews, most of them are going to be good citizens. Most of them are going to be good lawful citizens because they want to be here. They want to be Americans. Some have suggested a barrier is immoral. Then why do wealthy politicians build walls, fences, and gates around their homes? So if the liberals and the conservatives would pass an immigration law, that gives a pathway to citizenship, well, then those people wouldn't be illegal no more. So you get mad at the term all you want. Donald Trump says alien, right? So he, they say alien in the Bible, and the idea isn't that they're, you know, some other species. So if you are a person who says these things to try to rob them of their humanity, well, fuck you. These people are human. The bulk of them are human. Some of them are criminals. Some of them are animals. Those are the ones that got to be deported. The murderers, the rapists, yeah, they got to be deported. We got to do something about them. Just because what they're living in the shadow. I, mean, I don't even know the argument. What would be the argument to allow MS-13 to come in and terrorize our blacks and browns? We're all Americans, right? So white, black, brown Americans. So you're going to allow these criminals to come in and terrorize the? That's bull That's racist. That's racist. Says the sharp rise in unlawful migration fueled by our very strong economy.